I messed up. I had ordered the wrong stone and that's on me and I took full responsibility. And the further along that mistake gets down the line, the more expensive it gets to undo it. What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of the NS Podcast. This week, we're gonna actually start a new format with this podcast. Uh, we're gonna break this into three sections. We're gonna talk about our current projects, what's going on, what we're excited about, some of the details that are coming together that you're seeing on Site Visit and the Revealed series on YouTube. Uh, then we're gonna talk about some of the stuff that we're, we're working on for the future. And then we're gonna get into questions. Um, whether it's a homeowner that's reached out with an issue, uh, whether you might have a question that you wanna submit to us or even call in and talk about, love to entertain that. Uh, shoot us a DM uh, or an email, nick at nsbuilders.com. Um, and so let's get into it. Uh, before we do, this podcast is brought to you by Rental Run. Rental Run is an online app-based delivery service for construction material. They're in Philly, Chicago, Boston, um, I think that's it right now. I know they're coming out with, uh, in, in, or they're launching in additional cities in the US, but they are, you know, basically getting, they're eliminating the need for someone to leave the job site, drive to the supply yard, pick up what they need at the supply yard, check out, get back in the truck, drive back to the job, get back acclimated on the job and getting back to work, you know, which can be a two plus hour ordeal. They're handling it, you open your phone, you can order exactly what you need. They'll take care of it. They will even bring you fresh coffee. Not, not a bad gig. So let's get into it. So current projects, what we got going on, uh, what I'm excited about. So project 142, um, it's been a, a really long process, really patient clients. Um, difficult for us to really execute on because we didn't take the normal approach from design. It was really a lot of a design build. Um, but all of that aside, we're super excited to see this place wrap up. We are in punch list. Uh, the, the clients have their AV contractor on site. They're wrapping up what they need, and we're just going to let them do their thing for a couple weeks, and we're going to come in and do all our touch-up paint and be wrapped up. Some of the awesome details that have come together, um, some of you lovely people have commented on our YouTube about our handrail, or our, on our Instagram about the handrails not returning into the wall. The pieces have been added. Those returns are now installed. They are completely code compliant. Um, we also had our metal finisher, Rich Costa, uh, Rich Costa, on site, and he actually just detailed. He actually just sent me some photos of the stainless steel mono stringer that he was on site cleaning everything up, um, basically getting that thing to look absolutely mint. So stay tuned to Instagram over the next couple of days. I'm sure I'll post a picture of it. So excited to see that place wrap up. Project 163 with Kelly McGill uh, and Winslow Architect. They, that project, phase one, that kitchen, phase two, that uh, second bedroom or that third floor bedroom, the interior, that's been delivered back to the homeowners. That was you know mission critical for us to deliver before the holidays, before Thanksgiving, which is just in, in a couple weeks here. Um, and the team did a fantastic job on delivering that. Uh, a lot of the, there's a lot of detail that we haven't actually been able to share on this job because it's been so tight, it's been so hectic. We haven't really got in gotten into the details that you know we're going to showcase in upcoming videos. But I really want to call attention to the entire team's effort behind the pocket door that leads you into the pantry. Now, this pantry, you know, is essentially half of what the existing kitchen was. But when you stand back and look at the overall new kitchen, you have this pocket door on the right, which is actually an exterior pocket door. And I said that correctly, an exterior pocket door. We are working in a single family home in in the city, very tight quarters. We did not want to swing the door out because of weather. We did not want to swing the door in because it was going to impact the, the swing on the refrigerator. And I actually had come up with the idea. I had seen my, a good friend of mine, John, over at Vintage Builders, him talk about using these exterior pocket doors from Marvin, and that's exactly what we did. We got an exterior pocket door and installed it, and now this door opens up to a small stoop in the back alley, uh, and it doesn't take up any real estate. With the exception of a few e inches, it, it, it we had to fatten that wall up. But everyone's like, well, how does that work? You know, what about the weather stripping? Like, is it really, you know, efficient? Think of it as a traditional slider door. You have two, a, a fixed panel and then an operable panel, and that 
operable panel just slides in front of the fixed panel. It's very similar, except that fixed panel isn't a piece of glass. It's buried inside the wall. So there's insulation value. You're adding insulation on both sides. It's a really, really slick detail. But I want to go back to the pantry pocket door. The pantry pocket door was something that we went on site. We documented the entire profile and shape and size of the Marvin door. And we actually replicated it with our mill workshop here as an interior door we had a custom piece of glass made and when we installed it now you have this flanking pocket door that on both sides left and right they're exactly identical and when they're closed they look great and when they're open of course uh, one leads to the outside one leads to this awesome little pantry um, but overall it's just a really cool kitchen uh, we're just gonna let the compressor go because hey we're in we're in the workshop um, and it just it, it really came together well um, we're starting a new project in the back bay, um, and that is going to be a brownstone two-level um, renovation. Uh, the guys over at Bernardo, we just got through demo. This project, we, we started with demo early. Uh, we wanted to get in there and understand, like, uncover what was the potential of this place. We don't always do that, um, but in this case, it's a really quirky space, and the, the homeowner bought it knowing it was quirky and wanted to figure out what was the potential, and really glad we did because we got in there, we completely uh, demoed the spaces that we knew we were going to be upgrading. We even added some additional dem uh, demolition scope because we realized that there was potential underneath stairs you know we're talking about back bay so you know not we're not talking about square footage as valuable we're talking about square inches and we found square inches of space that we could build built-ins additional millwork just capture this space in within the unit to you know you know obviously increase its value uh, especially when it's renovated so for us we're in there we got the demo completed we found some asbestos we're having that abated and then we're going to get that place cleaned up and now the architect has a very clear understanding of what can be modified how it can be modified the structural engineer can see you know, how the existing structure is is built and we have a much better uh understanding of how the construction is going to be put together going forward um, and we're reducing or shrinking the the unknowns because if we went in there and we would have all these assumptions of what we thought we would find I mean frankly we found radiators buried in the wall that were active we found electrical that was not to code you know they're unfortunate finds but the, they're safety they're safety concerns so we do need to fix those uh, and we would have certainly not had those in our budget if we had just went at this with an all-inclusive budget so when we have the opportunity to do some preliminary or even full scope demo before design is completed and we get into full construction it's always our advice to do that in these complicated renovations um, and then our our passive house down in rhode island uh, we are through foundation. We have steel uh, being installed. Um, you guys saw that on Instagram. We have the steel, uh, most of the steel installed. Um, we had talked about locating all these anchor points. Uh, those all worked out great. We unfortunately, the ones that we did not have surveyed were in the wrong spot. Complete misunderstanding. Uh, not a terrible, uh, not a terrible deal. Uh, pushed us back a few days when we had to kind of modify things. But hey, it's construction. It's our job as a builder, general contractor, to work through those those mistakes as quickly and as efficiently as possible. And thankfully, we were waiting on a delivery from Rockwell uh, for our insulation for under slab, which you know is actually has been delayed due to this, you know supply chain issues and things like that so we're we're not really impacting the overall schedule you know however we would have liked to see all the steel up in one day um, it now turned into a two-day ordeal um, and then tomorrow we're actually going to be d demolishing our, our a new project that we announced with Steve Teak uh, so Steve Teak's uh, architectural designer in Utah we've partnered up and we're going to be building a beautiful home uh, for a family uh, just west of the city. So stay tuned for our stories on that. Uh, we'll be doing a demo, I mean a video, uh, but we'll be demolishing the house after um, Doug actually was there. Uh, Ken and uh, Julian were on site with me. And we did some reclamation um, and pulled out some material that we're going to use for some future furniture. Uh, we saved some, you know, hard goods like uh, metal and, and Doug, Doug, did we take any light fixtures maybe? Uh, we took what we could, what we found, found is valuable. Uh, unfortunately, the house had actually suffered some water, so there's a lot of rot and uh, just mold and, and mildew. So that house is going to be demolished, and we'll be building a beautiful new house. Um, 
I also want to talk, you know, that's what, what's going on with our current projects, what we're excited about getting started, like this new project with Steve Teak. Uh, and I want to answer a question. So I actually had dinner the other night and, um, and I want to preface this. If you guys have a question, you know, it could be directly related to a project that you're doing with a contractor and you're just not how to, you're not sure how to handle the situation or you're not sure how to approach, you know, Hey, I got this project. I'm not sure what my next step is. Please reach out to us. Um, I would love to just, you know, roll this into our, our programming. I think it's super interesting and I, I want to make sure I'm providing value to, to, to everyone, not, not just pro to pro, but especially, uh, some of you homeowners that listen, um, that could potentially either, either be clients of ours in the future or just looking to make sure that they're educating themselves in this industry. So I was out to dinner, um, a couple of week, uh, a couple of days ago. And my wife's friend had mentioned that they're uh, doing a project or she's doing a project and, you know, the countertops were installed and she didn't think that they were the right countertop material. And I was like, kind of choked up there for a minute because if you remember Project 142, uh, I had to bring in a crane to remove a countertop that was the wrong material. Very, very slight difference, but it was wrong. Uh, and we made it right and we removed it. So my wife kind of chuckled and, and I said, well, what's the story? And she said, well, I went to the stone yard and we picked out this stone and you know, we, I was like, this is the one I want. I love it. Blah, blah, blah. The stone fabricator came out, they installed the countertops and she immediately was like, this is not the same stone. Um, and I think there was some banter back and forth about like, you know, yes, it is. No, it's not blah, blah, blah. Ultimately the, the contractor was like, you're right. This isn't the right stone. Um, and it kind of put it back on her. Like, well, what do you want to do about it? And that is, you know, annoying to me because it's like, well, it's not like, this wasn't her responsibility, her responsibility, which, you know, was communicated to her is you pick out the stone and I will have that stone fabricated and installed. And she did that. And as a contractor, as a general contractor, as the builder, as the person that's in charge of ordering it, having it fabricated, paying the fabricator, overseeing the install, like that's, that is the job of a contractor. Like you are contracting the work by definition. You are, that is what the contractor does. And it, turn into, you know, well, what do you want to do about it? I, you know, maybe they can give, you know, there was a talk about maybe there's a discount for the stone. Maybe there, you know, I, I don't really, do you really want to rip it out? Like, do you want to, like, they would have to come back out and you'd have to, you know, re you bring out the, you'd have to have the plumber come back and disconnect the sink and reset the sink. And it's like, all of this stuff is being communicated to her as like, this is what you would have to do. You would have to get the plumber back out. You would have to have the sink reset. You would have to rip out the, the stone countertops and wait, you know, four weeks for the new ones to be fabricated. You And it's like, of course, as a homeowner, like that doesn't, like none of that sounds appealing because I don't want to go through that trouble. I don't want to have to, I don't want to have to call the plumber and have him do that. Never mind. Am I, does that mean I'm also paying him to do it? It's like, because I'm making the conscious decision to raise my hand and be like, this isn't the right material. And I said to her and I said, you know, unfortunately, like, I don't want to, I, I certainly don't want to hurt anyone's business, but I've been there and I've been, and I stand by making it right. And this is the builder's responsibility. The builder is the contractor's responsibility is to make sure that the right product goes in. And in this case, you know, th- you don't have to necessarily go back and be like, I'm demanding you to replace this and, or like, or take, take legal action. Like again, not, this is not legal, not again, but like, just to be clear, this is not legal advice, but I don't want to, I don't want to misconstrue. Like you don't, if, if you're comfortable with the stone and you're okay with it, like that's fine. But if you're adamant and that is not the stone that you wanted, ultimately this is absolutely the contractor's responsibility to make it right and that might be a difficult conversation but i would just try to approach it and and in the sense of can we just take a breath here and and just walk through like i feel it i'm speaking as a homeowner i feel as though i did my my the work that i was asked to do i i picked out the stone i you know i confirmed that that's the stone i wanted you know whether there was something signed off or whatnot like that you know that like that could have been uh a recourse like oh well you didn't sign off on the stone so i thought this is the one but ultimately the builder said no this is the wrong stone like you're absolutely right so in that case like we know it's the wrong stone you know 
I would I would want to speak with the builder, and if it has to be the three, the builder, the the stone fabricator, and the homeowner, that maybe it's that. Maybe it's a quick phone call and just like, can we just like back up and understand like what happened? Like I picked out the stone on X day, and then next thing I know, I get this stone installed, and it's the wrong stone. And usually, when you can kind of walk through that process, like you real like there's there's usually this inherent like oh this is where the mix up came. It's like that stone was actually supposed to be the one that we were going to use on the last project and we had it tagged the wrong project, whatever it is. But ultimately, like as the homeowner, you had done your due diligence and you have committed, like you ha- you have done what you were, what, what was necessary for you to get the product that you wanted. Learn from like, and, and that might be a difficult conversation, but ultimately you deserve to get the product that you asked for. That is, that's my advice. Like it has to be a conversation. You have to kind of walk through it and hopefully come to an amicable, amicable decision. In my case, we replaced it at our cost. No questions asked. Like it sucked. It was terrible. But like at the end of the day, my reputation and like we committed to delivering a product and I messed up. I had ordered the wrong stone and that's on me. And I took full responsibility. And, you know, yes, I called my stone fabricator. I explained what happened. They were kind enough to work with me to make sure that we did it as cost effectively as possible. But that didn't matter if it was or wasn't. That's that's a good relationship with your one of our partners. Now, let's talk about before this happens, when you are selecting a stone I do think that, yes, you absolutely want to be on site picking it out, but I think it's really important to document that. And, you know, if you're on site, you're picking out a stone, have the stone fabricator have a, a sheet. You know, hey, you know, we're selecting that. You know, we're, we're selecting this stone. It is, you know, this manufacturer and this color. Uh, and then furthermore, I would, I would also ask to see the files f- before it's cut. Like often, oftentimes they're, they, they line up veining. Like you want to like approve that. You want to see like, Hey, before it's cut, can I just get one last check? And then on that sheet, they should list like what material it is. And you should be able to go back to the sheet that you looked at. Like I approved such and such stone. Here's the cut file. It's saying that this is the stone that they're cutting. Great. The f- last and final step is, uh, you know, I, uh, going back to the first, take a picture of it, take a picture of the stone, make sure like, you know, it is what it, you, you what you you approve oftentimes they have small samples too not a bad idea to grab one when they go to install if you can be home be home and when that stone arrives take a look at it and make sure yeah that's the stone that i i i had intended this to be um because it does like the further along that mistake gets down the line the more expensive it gets to undo it and if you can if you can stop before they install it that's going to save the plumber a trip and the the possible builder and that plumber cost like it's just going to be less and less expensive the the sooner that you catch that mistake so that would be my advice uh when you are dealing with something specific like a countertop you can attribute this to any material uh but this particular question came in about kitchen countertops guys appreciate you listening uh make sure you check out the site visit and revealed um youtube series uh, and make sure you're tuning in to at NS Builders and at Nick Schiffer on Instagram uh, and all the platforms. And stay tuned for another episode next week. As always, this podcast is brought to you by Reno Run. Uh, they are our partner for on site delivery, uh, app based, online based, uh, mobile, job site, material delivery, saving us countless hours. And if you guys are interested in free delivery, we actually have a dedicated page. It's podcast.renorun.com slash NS. See you guys then.